So, Lucas, look here, your computer suddenly stopped displaying video or started without any video at all. It's a shame you installed it. In this video, I'll walk you through a sequence of steps you can use to definitively resolve this issue. But it's very important that you remain calm during this process, so that, during the process, in your anxiety and anger, you don't end up making the problem even worse, as happened to a client of mine, who started messing around in a very simple problem, which was just an HDMI cable, turned into a motherboard problem. He ended up damaging it, okay? So, be very careful at this point. Remember, if the video helps you, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel too. First thing, everyone, when you turn on your computer, check here by pressing the caps lock. Look, it's lighting up guys, very important. This is already a good sign that the processor is working, it's processing the data here and should display the image, but the problem is on the video card and on the front, okay? But since the LED is lighting up here when you press caps lock, also check if your keyboard is connected correctly. It has to be on any USB port here. I'll plug it back in, press caps lock, and it lights up there. Num lock also works. If it's not lighting up here, guys, when you press it, then I'll leave a mark here in the video so you can skip ahead and see what you might be doing in this situation. On mine, it's lighting up. So here, okay, I can follow the test procedures below. First of all, to rule out that the problem isn't the monitor, we'll disconnect the cable from the monitor and connect it to another monitor. If you don't have another monitor, it could be a TV like this one that has HDMI on the back. You'll connect the cable from the video card, the HDMI from your TV, or another monitor you have there, okay? If possible, Okay, let's say you don't have any other monitor or TV with HDMI, then you'll really have to move on to the next step. But remember, this is the first step. Sometimes your monitor might have a problem. Sometimes it's not turned on too. Sometimes some monitors turn off by themselves after a while. So, you check if the power is on, as I said here, if you can see it clearly, and make sure it's connected properly. Then, make sure the cable is properly connected, both here on the video card and on the monitor. It has to be very well connected as well. Check here, put your hand there, with your finger, and make sure it's properly connected, okay? Another important thing, make sure you connected it correctly. What happens? A lot of people come here, turning it on for the first time or doing maintenance, I don't know, something, and forget to connect it here to the motherboard, connect it here, because most motherboards have an HDMI connection as well, and they end up connecting it here and there's no video. Why? Because it's down here that you have to connect it to the video card, if your computer already has a dedicated video card. If it doesn't, your processor probably has integrated video there, so you connect it up here. But people often forget and end up connecting it up here by mistake. The right thing to do is connect it down here. I'll connect it here. Look, look, it already gave an image because up there on the motherboard wouldn't really give an image. This processor I have here doesn't have integrated video. Okay, and following the same line of cable reasoning, Another thing that can prevent your computer from displaying video is the cable itself. I'm going to connect this one here. For example, it's another HDMI cable. Notice that it doesn't turn on. What happens is that sometimes the cable is defective, okay? Or if it was working up to a certain point, it could be that somewhere along the line it broke, got chewed, something like that, you know? Especially if you have animals at home, sometimes a dog or something like that, they'll chew it, or the table leg will be on it. Even from moving the cable around so much, it ends up chewing it and losing the ability to transmit video. You go and get another cable, remove the cable that's there, and test with another cable, okay? And then the image comes back. It's that simple. You don't even need to open the case. It would solve the problem. Another situation, if possible, let's say you have a more modern monitor that already comes with a DisplayPort cable, like this one here. It's a slightly different cable than HDMI, and all current video cards come with a DisplayPort. So I'll even remove the DisplayPort protection here. You'll try connecting with another connection before opening the computer. Then it's a good idea to try another type of cable, another connection here, look, on the DisplayPort here. And sometimes it gave an image for some reason, a little dirt, something on the video card's HDMI port. It eventually stopped displaying video, but only a display portion, okay? But that's it, if you can do this test, sometimes it can solve it. It could be a physical problem with the video card, which sometimes stops working only with HDMI. It happens sometimes too, but this is usually a case of the older card, something like that. More likely, it's dirt, something, oxidation. That's why it's always good to have this at home, look, not even for contact. This here saves a lot of life, whether it's memory slots, video card slots, or the connections themselves, USB, 
HDMI. You can apply this here with the part disconnected, of course, and then let it dry a little. It dries very quickly, sometimes the connection works perfectly again. Okay, everyone? In the situation where when you press the cap here, no LED lights up, or no LED lights up, or if it stays on all the time, let's say it's on here, but it stays on and doesn't change when you press it, it doesn't turn off and on again. The first thing you need to check is your personal power outlet, especially if it's one of those cheap power strips here, which causes a lot of problems. I've had a client of mine buy a computer from me, and it was working perfectly here. When he got home, it didn't work. The keyboard LEDs wouldn't light up, it just turned on and didn't display anything. He'd get there and check. It was a very simple power strip like this one, just unplug it and plug it directly into the outlet, and that would fix the problem. It could also be a problem with the outlet, so check and test with another outlet. What I recommend is that you use these outlets, quality power strips with filters, okay? Like this one, the eye clumper. The eye clamper is better, and I'll even include it in the description here, because this one already comes with a real protection circuit, with several towers, not just a fuse. This protection circuit will really give you extra protection for your equipment. Lightning, power surges, and other power surges won't affect your equipment. Well, if the issue with the outlet here didn't solve it, then we'll move on to something more advanced. We'll have to move the parts. We'll open the computer here. We'll have to access the motherboard and other components, but always very carefully, okay? I say careful, guys, because usually in this situation we get stressed, irritated, and want to solve it quickly, but that won't always help. In fact, it can even make the situation worse. I took two motherboards here already removed from the computer so we can run some simulations of what we might be doing. Let's start with the simplest here. It could happen that the motherboard's BIOS simply froze, bugged, and crashed, okay? But you can do this. Take a small screwdriver. There will always be a battery here on the motherboard. It's not always easy to access. Sometimes you'll have to remove the video card because it's in the front. Go ahead, remove the battery, and with everything turned off, okay? Always unplug everything. Go ahead, touch the middle and the other side of this little piece of hardware on the side here. Make a short circuit, okay? Between the core here and the side. This little battery socket here. I'm touching, look, the two metal pieces here. And leave it a little bit here and remove it. That's it, you've reset the abyss. You go ahead, put the battery back in, put the video card back in, if you removed it, and turn on the computer. That's it, okay? With the motherboard inside the computer. Here, they're out, okay? There's no cable or anything. You won't touch anything. Just remove the battery, do that, and turn it back on to see. Did it work? Did it show a picture? If it gives you an image, great, your problem is solved. But if it doesn't, then you'll have to try again. In this situation, you don't have a video card. You can use that damn thing I mentioned before, contact cleaner. I recommend using it on the RAM slots. Then remove the RAM. For example, this one has the RAM. I'll take it as an example. Then you check for any dust or dirt on the connections here. This one is brand new, so there's nothing. But then you can simply take advantage of the fact that you removed it. You can also use isopropyl alcohol instead of contact cleaner. It's good to always have it at home and cleaner. Cleaner is easier to find these days. It serves the same purpose. But it's quite common to find it on Shopee. I'll leave the link in the description so you always have it. You go there, shake the contact cleaner here, and apply it to the contacts. Apply it to the contacts there. Let it dry a bit in the slots. Apply it to the RAM too. You can apply it here to the contacts. Apply it there and let it dry a little. You can see here that there's a little bit of liquid left, but it dries very quickly, okay? This one isn't conductive, okay? But like, uh, if you get too close to the battery, remove the battery, okay? First, if you buy this cleaner that isn't a spray, you can use the applicator there and pour a little bit into the slot. Pour it here in the slot and then it comes with a little brush. Here I have a little brush here that's anti-static, but you don't need it, okay? You pour the alcohol here and use this little brush here. You can use an unused toothbrush, okay? You go there and apply it here just to spread the alcohol here well for a deeper cleaning. After that and done here, you can also do it on the contacts here. Apply the alcohol and pass the brush here on the memory contacts. Once that's done, you can put the memories back, right? So, put it back in, then yes, as I said, it's out of the computer. In your case, you might not need to remove it, you don't need to disassemble everything to avoid unnecessary work. Keep it there in the case. You don't need to remove everything, folks. The less you mess with it, the less risk you'll accidentally damage any components. Once that's done, put the video card back in the slot and then turn on your computer again and see if it shows an image. Okay? 
It still doesn't show an image, let's give an example, it still doesn't show an image, even so, you cleaned everything and used alcohol, cleaned the contacts in the slots, and so on, it didn't work, it still doesn't show an image, the LED doesn't light up when you press the caps. Come back here to the memories, let's focus on the memories, you're going to do the following, you're going to remove one of the memories, you removed one, okay, and you're going to turn the equipment back on, okay, put it back together, put back whatever you need to put back, but try to turn it on with just one memory, test it, it didn't work, you're going to turn it off again, that same memory you left here, you're going to move it, now you're going to move it to the second slot, okay, and go ahead, turn the device back on, and test it, if there's no image, remove that memory and put the other one in its place, okay, you can test this in either slot, test one by one, test both individually, okay, if one of them works in both slots, then that means this memory worked, okay? It's perfect, and the other one, if you test it individually in both slots, if it doesn't work, the problem is that memory. You'll have to replace one of the memories and you'll have to keep using one in the meantime, okay? Alone, no problem. You can use just the memory, you'll have less RAM, but you can use it normally. If you solve the video issue, you'll notice that when video is playing, the capsule will start working normally again. Usually, when you experience this problem of no image, it's often related to either a non-functioning RAM slot or the RAM itself. One of the slots might be faulty. What happens then? You'll have to stop using that slot until you replace the motherboard or processor, because often the processor is faulty and can't read all the channels. Each slot here would be a channel, let's assume. So, if the processor has trouble reading one of these channels, that slot won't be functional. But this happens more often when there's physical damage to the processor. Sometimes someone drops the processor, breaks a pin on the processor, or breaks a pin on the motherboard where the processor connects to the processor socket. So, it depends a lot on the case, but in most cases, when video suddenly stops displaying without anyone touching it, it's usually due to dirt. Cleaning will usually resolve the issue. But it can happen, if it's an older memory, that it suddenly stops working, but because its useful life has ended, it simply died, right? Then you'll have to replace it. It's a situation that can happen. After all this, folks, it still doesn't display video. I've tried everything, but none of them show video. So, before we say, it's not the video card that's the problem, we'll have to buy another video card, there's still a possibility it's the power supply. The power supply not only powers all the components, motherboard, processor, hard drives, SSDs, and LEDs in the computer, but also, as in this case, the video card independently through the power cable. And it even has a working white LED. What happens is that many of these cards, if you don't provide the correct current, may not display video either, and this LED may turn red or not even light up. So if it has this LED and it's a color other than white or green, then it's easy to kill the problem from the start, right? But if there's no LED at all, or some video cards don't have one, it would be interesting to also test with another power supply. Get another power supply from a friend or a colleague, find that difficult. Or if you sometimes keep a good quality power supply lying around, then you could test it. But this situation is a bit out of scope because not everyone will have a power supply at home to test. But if you do, it doesn't hurt. But let's just say that even with the power supply, it still didn't work. In this situation, the video card really isn't working properly. There are some symptoms that determine if the video card is truly bad, mainly when it starts up differently, when its rotation speed becomes very fast, something abnormal, behavior it had previously. Sometimes, when there's a shorted memory fault, the video card fan will spin very loudly, making a lot of noise. So you can already notice that the video card really isn't working properly, or sometimes it doesn't even spin up. If you see that it's not even starting to spin up, some video cards really don't spin up, but only after the equipment is turned on. What's not normal is the card simply showing no signs of life. Even when turned on, it doesn't spin up. So, it could actually be a symptom of a dead graphics card. I think that's it, folks. If any of the steps helped, let us know which ones you followed and resolved the issue. If the graphics card is faulty, check if your processor has integrated video. If it has integrated video, you can remove the graphics card and leave it with just the processor. Then, connect the HDMI cable to the motherboard itself, at the top, until you buy a new graphics card. You can use it like this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as possible. 
If the video helped, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel, as future videos may help you too. Once again, I invite you to access my complete PC assembly course here, to become an expert in hardware in general. It's an excellent course, very complete and very accessible. A discount for those of you who watched the video so far, okay? So, that's it. Big hug. See you next time. Thanks.